All right, so today is Friday the 22nd. Today is Friday the 22nd. We don't have our, a quiz today because we have still a, yet a lot to cover before we can um, take a quiz, okay? Um, we didn't get to the substitution method on yesterday, so we definitely want to do that today. Your warm-up should be completed. We have, okay, let me see, Thursday's warm-up, mm, Friday. No, we're just going to turn it in as is. So we're going to submit our, um, we're going to work on our homework first. The, Friday, the Thursday's homework, we want to do that first. Okay, that's what you need to be working on. Um, after which, I want to model for you the substitution method. Yes, baby. Yes, uh, there's one I think in the cup. If not, then I'll I'll sharpen another. One. What you need, baby? What's wrong? Yeah, she didn't put them up there right. It's okay. I'm sorry. What was you saying, sweetie? What about it? What's wrong? Okay, we'll just go on and do it. Yeah, we're doing Thursday in here. Um, don't worry about it, baby. You can do it in a few minutes. Okay, I'll sharpen one and get it to you, okay? And then I'm going to model substitution method, and then you're going to do some practicing. And that's all we're doing today is just all those things. Okay, um, makeup work. I have a lot of grading, a lot of catching up to do, so please make sure that you submit everything because it's going to go to power school. Okay, it's going to go directly to Power School. It's already linked, so please make sure that you submit ASAP. Okay, all right. Um, let's go to the homework, please. Yes, baby. Did you um, I'll go and look. I can't remember if I did or not, to be honest. Uh, while you're working on the homework, I am going to look to see if I did that, okay, because I don't remember. All right, so this is what you should be working on at this time. I'm going to read it out just to make sure you understand what you're doing. Okay, so this is the table below. Given the table, what percent of students were more than five points away from the predicted average? Okay, that's what it's asking you there. All right. Uh, for number two, what statement properly describes the scatter plot below? This is the scatter plot. Which one of these? Um, is the best, uh, best describes this scatter plot. Well, number three, these are box and whisker plots. It's saying which is not. So you're looking for the statement that's not going to be true, comparing the box and whisker plots. And notice if you forgot, this number is your, the number on way on the end. This is your lower extreme. These are your lower extreme. That's the lowest number in the list. The number all the way on the end is your upper extreme. These are the highest numbers in the list, okay? This number that's in the middle, that's on the middle, this is your median, okay? This is the middle number. This is the middle number, your median. The line goes through the middle number in the list, okay? Mm -hmm. This number right here on the number line in the box and whisker, this is your uh, lower quartile. This is the number that's in the middle between the median and the lower extreme, okay? So this number, um, this is the number that's in the 20, uh, 25th percentile. This is the 50th percentile, it's half of the list. This is the 75th percentile. This is the upper um, quartile, all right? It's in the middle, directly in the middle between the median and the upper extreme. So again, lower quartile, upper quartile, okay? All right, so that should help you answer, um, answer the questions there. What is the appropriate perimeter of the triangle given these vertices? So you have to graph these. You should have a little piece of graph paper that's left. If you don't have a little piece of that graph paper that's left, I will give you a piece of graph paper so you can see that. Any questions, comments, or concerns about the homework before I let you work on it? All right, go ahead and finish your homework. I'm going to pause for the calls. Please work on that. Okay, let me get my calculator back, babe. All right, this one right here, this first one, 
Um, you had to type this in the calculator. Did you leave it type in? Yes. Okay. So you go to stat edit and you type these numbers into the calculator. Okay. Your study time is in minutes. That's under X. And then your actual test score is under uh, Y. All right. Or L2. So after that, you press the second. Go over the calc. You're going to do lean red. You want the equation to go into the Y equals so you can find the predicted amounts. So you go here, you press second one, comma, second two, comma. Then you have, right, VARS, Y VARS, and then enter, enter, enter. Okay, and that puts the equation here. So now to find the predicted values using the line of best fit, you can go to um, you can go to second graph. Now look, um, these numbers are kind of high, so we want to go go here to table set second window, and instead of putting um, the, our independent is our x values, we're gonna put it on x, and then when you do that, let me put it back on auto because mine was already on x. Okay, so I'm gonna. Put it on X, and now this is what you kind of would see. So you can type in your own X values. So Sarah, let me see my pencil. I don't know what I did with my pencil. Um, there it is. Well, thank you, because this is a pen. I need a pencil. All right, so Sarah, uh, 40 minutes. Her predicted amount, using the line of best fit, her predicted amount is going to be 85.7. Okay. Uh, Joel, his predicted amount is going to be 63.9. Gabby, predicted amount is going to be 71.2. Or, yeah, two. Uh, Lawrence predicted amount is going to be 103. And Robert predicted amount, what's 42 minutes, is 87. Okay, so now we want to know what percentage of students. The total of students is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to put 5 on the bottom. That's the total students. Out of 5 students, how many of those? Uh, were more than five points, more than five points away from their predicted average. Only one who? Sarah. Very good. So we put one. So what percentage is one over five? 20%. 20%. Okay. So this is, it will be 0.20. And then you move the decimal over, that's 20%. So the answer choice there is what? 20%. 20% A. Okay. Uh, number two, okay, which one of these is the best or is the proper description for the scatter plot? Yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. the graph is a Very good. It is a strong positive correlation. Excellent job. Number three, we got to choose the one that's not true. It says, A, both box and, box and whisker plots have a minimum of three. Is that true or false? Uh, false. What is their oh, minimum? No. no, that's true. Oh, this is three right here. This is three. So this is true. All right. Uh, B, the median of the test is 12. This yes, is median. That's true. that's true. C, the first quartile, that's this quarter right here. This is the first quartile. The first quartile of test one, this is test one, mm -hmm. um, is higher than the quartile for test two. No. They're saying that this one is higher than this one. No, it's not. No, it's not. This is not, this is not higher than this one. This the test two is higher than that one. So this one is false. The third quartile are the same for both graphs. It is. They're sure. exactly the same. That is true. Sure. Sure. So the answer is C. Did anybody get that on their own? Oh, okay. That's good, y'all.
the last one, what is the approximate perimeter? And this is where we had to use our, um, our graph, right? Graph paper. All right, so what's the perimeter? We got A is negative 1. Let me turn this the right way. Negative 1 and positive 3. That's A. Then 3 and 1. And then 1 and negative 3. So this is A. B, C. All right, so in order to find the perimeter um, of these, you can draw a right triangle for each of these and figure out the distance. So this right triangle here, to find this distance, this is one, two, three, four. This is one, two. So let me go to remember. So this is four squared plus two squared, the square root, okay? So I'm gonna type this in the square root. Four squared plus two squared. Close the parentheses. And that gives us about 4.5, right? I'm gonna put this out to the side. So I'm gonna do this one now. One, two, three, four. One, two, is that the same thing? Yes. So it's again, it's another 4.5 or so. And then this one, this is two here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six. say again. Six, six. Six what? Well, six yeah, squared squared plus two squared. Mm-hmm. And that gives us 6.3, about 6.3. So we rounded all of these. So let's add those up and see what we get. We got 4.5 plus 4.5 plus 6.3. And what's that? About what? It's about 15. And approximate means it's not going to be exact. We're rounding. Any questions about how we got that? All right. Please make sure that you see me. Anybody still copying? I'm sorry. I just moved it. Is there anybody that's still copying? Okay. Don't forget to take a picture of your graph. All right. There's a sheet that I gave you on the substitution method. It looks like this. We're not going to do all of these because that's a lot. But we're going to do some. Please take out the notebook. Were there any questions about the graphing method? Is there anybody that still have trouble with graphing linear equations? I'm going to give you the answers to the graphing sheet from yesterday to make sure that you have those right, okay? Let me pause real quickly so I can get my sheet. Before this. So number five, we got two comma two. We got the ordered pair, two comma two. What did you get, somebody different? What did you get for number six, Peyton? No solution. No solution. They're parallel. Number seven, what did you get? No, four and negative four. Four and negative four. Very good. The ordered pair, four comma negative four. And what did you get for number eight? Anastasia, very good. Three comma negative two. Make sure that you graph them. Please don't just put the answer. That's just not going to suffice. Okay, you need to make sure you graph them so I can see that you understand how to do this and you know where they cross. Are there any questions? Does anybody need to see any of those? You need to see one? You didn't even try it. I'm not, uh-uh. You need to try it first before I just uh, help you with that again. Because remember, I, I did that part. That's my writing right there. Try it first, okay? And then when you try and you still don't get it, then I help you, okay? Try it first because you didn't do anything um, other than what we did together. I need you to do a little better than that. All right, so let's go to the next page. We're doing substitution method. We're doing substitution method. Try first. You hear me what I'm saying? All right, so this is... Mm, my page numbers are off. There it is. Okay. I see what I did. I need to put it in both notebooks and stuff this morning. That's what happened. All right. So I will, Isaiah, let me show you this one so you can 
maybe this might help you i don't want, i want i do want you to try those on your own but i'll show you how to do these okay bless your little heart you ready you ready okay this was number four that you should have already done mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. all right so let's do i'm gonna do show you how to do this one so that you can go back and do the ones that you struggle with so turn to that page since you didn't do it and you need to do this with me you remember what page that's on when i was at that let me go back that's page 10 okay you got it that's okay mine are were two in one notebook it's just all screwed up so just go back to this example can you find that example okay so just write number four and go back and do the other ones okay do you need graph paper I have the graph paper. Okay, there you go. Use one of those. If you need some more, let me know. All right, so we're going to do this. Write this down, babe. Be careful with those calculators because that's all we got. All right. Cooper, what's wrong? What's wrong? You're not doing anything, baby. You okay? Okay, so we're going to rewrite the first equation, and we're going to, the other ones are easy. These you have to write in slope-intercept form, but the ones, the examples I gave you are already in slope-intercept form. You understand? So we're going to subtract 4x on both sides. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got to isolate it, uh, sorry, y, so we move the x to the other side. This gives us just y on this side. And on this side, I'm putting negative 4 plus 2. I'm bringing them both down because they're not like terms. I can't combine them. Are you all right with that? So let's go ahead and graph this one. We identify what the slope and the y-intercept is. The slope here is negative 4 over 1, rise over run. Are you okay with that? Yeah. You sure? The y-intercept for this one is positive 2. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to take, I'm going to pause a little bit because you're still writing. Okay. So now we're going to find positive 2 on the y-axis. That's right here. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. This is my starting amount. And we're going to take our rise over run to put points on the line. Rise is negative 4, so that means we go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Run is a positive 1, so go to the right 1. So repeat those steps. Down, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the right 1. Understood? Points in the opposite direction. If I'm working backwards, I go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the left 1. I'm going to draw my line. Are you okay with that? Okay. So now I'm going to graph the second equation. Okay. Let's rewrite the second equation. That's going to be x minus y is equal to 3. We have to write this in slope-intercept form, right? Yeah. So in order to get y by itself, get rid of the x first. So we're going to subtract x on both sides. You okay with that? This is gone, and we're left with negative y is equal to a negative x plus 3. Good with that also? To get this uh, y by itself, you, don't forget, you got to get rid of that negative, so divide everything by negative 1. So this gives me positive y is equal to a positive 1x, or x, minus 3. You okay? Okay. So my slope here, anybody, what's my slope here? 1 over 1. 1 over 1. Good job, baby. And what's my y-intercept? Negative 3. negative 3. You good? So now we're going to find negative 3 on the y-axis. Negative 3 on the y-axis is right here. Now we're going to use rise over run. We're going to go... Positive 1, that's up 1. Positive 1 on the bottom is to the right 1. Up 1, right 1. Okay. 
You got it? Points in the opposite direction, down one, left one. Connect your points. Where do they cross? One. Mm -hmm. negative two. One and negative two. Are you okay with that? Do you understand what you're doing? So I want you to go back later on and finish those problems, okay? Okay, okay let's do substitution. Are, is, there, is everybody okay? So this is page... Let me get it right one day. Page 11. I have to go back and fix my other notebook. This is substitution method. It's page one? Yeah. It's page one. Um, did we oh um, did we do graphing method? That was that work. Let's put the worksheet. You're right. Let's put the worksheet oh, yeah. here. Mm -hmm. That's true. Sorry about that, y'all. So let's put that worksheet, that graphing method worksheet. Let's put that here. Yes, baby. You always gotta go to the bathroom. Why don't you use the bathroom? during lunch okay so you need to start this is your last day okay go ahead use the bathroom during lunch like you're supposed to um just go ahead and go uh, no there's that passes on back on my desk use the red one thank you graphing method and this is the worksheet okay paste that there Page ten is the is the notes that we took. That's what I was just doing. That was part of page ten. Because page nine. What is page nine? I think those. That was the quadratic functions, um, quadratic formula sheet thing. Remember the little worksheet we did with the quadratic formula? You supposed to oh, paste that in. Okay. okay? All right, so now we're on page 12. This is substitution. That is correct. Uh huh. Why do you keep turning around talking to him? You don't know. Well, please stop. This one, I think you, I, I hope you find this one to be easy, okay? This is just where you're going to use the substitution method to find where they cross. So you're using algebra to find uh, the X and the Y value. Yes, baby. Can I, I don't think I have any more. Um, does anybody have glue in their pouch that he could use? Can you give him that? Because I don't think I have any more glue. Use an algebra to find the x coordinate, the x and y coordinates. In other words, where they cross. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Cooper, you need some paper? Okay. Don't forget this is page 12 in your notebook. Okay. Your pen is falling apart. Where is your sidekick? He absent today. He all right? All right, let's do this first problem. Y is equal to 6x minus 11. That's one of the equations. The second equation is negative 2x minus 3y is equal to a negative 7, okay? You 
be all over the place, don't you? Put page nine on it. Just put page eight, put page nine on it. Bless your little heart. Thank you. Now focus on what we're doing right now, okay? Because you know how you get lost. You know we're near ready. Let me pause. Jesus, take the wheel. Okay. Make sure I'm recording. All right, so this is how this works. The first thing that you're going to do is make sure that you isolate one of the variables. One of the variables is isolated. Y is isolated. So you're going to take this expression and substitute it for Y in the other equation. Because remember, the only reason why we're doing that is because you can't solve for both X and Y at the same time. So I'm going to rewrite the second equation. Does it, do you have to use the first yeah, it's already isolated. So yes, oh. sir. Now we're going to replace Y with 6x minus 11. So this is negative 2x minus 3, and you're replacing y with this expression, 6x minus 11. Bring everything else down. Alyssa, you okay? All right. So now we can solve for x because that's the only variable that's missing now is x. So in order to solve for x, do distributive property first, like you're solving a regular equation. So this is negative 3 times the 6x and the negative 11. So let's bring this down. What's negative 3 times 6x? Very good. What's negative 3 times a negative 11? 33. Positive 33. Good job. And bring this down. Questions about that step? Combine like terms now. We can combine these two. What's a negative 2x minus 18x? Um, negative, 20x. negative 20x. Okay. Now what do we do to get x by itself? Subtract 33. Subtract 33. So this is going to give us a negative. This is gone. This gives us a negative 20x on this side. What's negative 7 minus 33? Negative 40. Negative 40. Good job, y'all. And now how do we get x by itself? Divide by negative 20. Divide by negative 20. And so our x coordinate is equal to a what? 2. Is, is, is equal to 2. Got it? Yes. Okay. So that's our x coordinate. Look, we're almost close to our solution. We need an x and a y coordinate, right? X is 2. So now what do you think we can do to figure out what the y is? Yes. Uh, well, substitute a 2 in the x and the x. Very good. We're going to substitute the 2 in for x here. So we got y is equal to 6 times 2 minus 11. All right, so what's 6 times 2? 12. 12 minus 11 is what? 1. 1. So where do they cross? What's the solution here? 2, 1. Okay, how are we feeling? Do you feel like it's hard or not? Okay, go ahead. Yes. Remember, y'all, please use that bathroom at lunch. What's up, babe? You had a question? No. I thought you said my name. Did you say my name? I'm saying yes, sir. Oh, okay. All right, number two. Let's try number two. We have two. Do I need what you need, baby? You need the screen just like that? Okay. Is that okay? Or you need it you need it up this way or you need it? Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm gonna move it up as soon as I feel like everybody's finished copying. 
Is everybody finished coughing? Nobody said anything, so I'm assuming that's a yes. 2x minus the 3y is equal to a negative 1. And then again, we have y is equal to x minus 1. The first thing you do is isolate one of the variables. Well, one of the variables is already isolated. The y is isolated. They have y is equal to this expression here. So we are going to rewrite the, the first equation and substitute this expression in for y. Any questions about what Ms. Reyes just said? So find y, the rise right here, and replace this expression with y. So that's 2x minus 3 times x minus 1. Bring everything else down. Jacob, is that okay with you? Are you fine? All right, so now we're going to use distributive property here. So we have 2x. What's negative 3 times x? Negative 3x. Negative 3x. What's negative 3 times a negative 1? Three. Positive 3. Good job. Okay. Now, what's the next step to solving this equation? Uh, so the oh, combine, combine like, like terms. Combine like terms. And what does that give you? Negative, negative x. Negative x, somebody said, plus what? Plus 3. Very good, babe. Okay, so what's after that? What do we do next? Subtract 3. Subtract 3 on both sides. Good job. And that gives me a negative x is equal to what number? Negative 4. Negative 4. All right. x is still not by itself. What do we have to do? Divide, divide by negative 1. And divide by negative 1. And that's going to give you x is equal to what number? 4. 4. So our x coordinate, I'll put it up here, is 4. Now how do we find our y coordinate? Yes? You substitute the x in for the other function. Okay. So what equation, which equation do you want to use? Y equals yeah. x plus minus 1. Use that second one. That's the one I would use. It, it, does, it doesn't matter which one. You're going to get the same answer, but this is the easier one to use. So we're going to say y is equal to, what you say, baby? How do I substitute what? Oh, let's do this one first, please, and then I'll go back, okay? No, I'm just saying, like, you would use the same equation to find the x and the y. Right. So I'm going to do this one, finish this up, and then I'll show you. Okay. okay. So what is this going to give me for y? Three. This is going to give me 3. Any questions about that? No. So you can take 4 and substitute it into this and get the same answer. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah, I know. Okay. Please hold on to this paper. Make sure I get my calculators back. Wait, so this, this is the thing you want us to um, turn into. Once you no, it's not. What, did I say that? Hold on. Uh, I, I, because I just put 